so today's session is about observability so how we can do the observation of how our microservices are working that we're going to go through So today's agenda is we get to know what is the observability and <coughs> why we need this, what are the basic three ways we can do the observability, and then uh, how to implement that with the Spring basic uh, code snippet and non-conventional observability that are there. So, basically, this is observability, and uh, it is about all of this to basically give you some basic concept so that you get a summarization how you can do that, okay? And then we can have a, like another session where you can have this uh, demo code on this, okay? So, what do you mean by observability? Uh, what this really is, uh, what are the three pillars that we know, and what are the things you can do to implement this, right? And <coughs> also, what are the different non-conventional way we can do this observability other than the tools that the Spring Boot can provide, okay? So some question is, what is observability? So Wikipedia give a definition that's uh, look very con complex to understand. So we can summarize this much simpler meaning term that uh, is that how we can you know understand what is our system is doing, uh, our software application is doing, interacting with the other application, interacting with our correlate with our output. So where this output has happened and uh, why the output is garbage or not, why the cause of that, so we get uh, some idea about this, what is going on inside the application. So what is going on inside our application? For example, you can ask arbitrary question of what is your system is observed, observable or not, whether it can be asked question later on to it to know what is happened to a certain period of time. So how it is basically hard problem to track in, to track the data points and understanding the context why the data output has been created. And then we can do the troubleshooting. So unless until we know it is very hard to know why the system is there. So and why we need this? We can say complexity that the cloud distributed computing gives us. It gives us a kind of like a big kind of like a death star kind of a picture where these three pictures are basically a one to one interaction between multiple edge servers. So there are thousands and thousands of servers are deployed, and those servers are actually interacting with each other. So every servers which are interacting with each other, uh, first one is Amazon, next one is Amazon, uh, uh, Netflix, and third last one is the Twitter, that their observability view. So multiple magnitude, they have like a thousands of services going on. Okay, so how are we going to be dealing with the complexity, right? Like a simple LAMP stack to now, that is running in a single server PHP MySQL, we are now, going into a more complex single server environment to two to three to their couple of component, couple of microservices. It is easier to for you to troubleshoot. Like right? you can you know discover the logs and you can find out. You can know that you have to just go into the one particular server to go to. But in cloud server where the particular 
application leaves because there are many instances instances coming and going right and which version of that particular instance having in an issue uh, it is very difficult to debug so we cannot debug easily uh, just like we normally can do on the runtime right so it will be very difficult without knowing if you have a, like a large scale or huge scale of application so sometime you always uh, some piece will always get broken and so there is a lag of big numbers between the application latency will there so that's why the observability is required okay and you can then need to face unknowns right it goes wrong you don't know what is known you need to figure it out troubleshoot fix something or not you only have those built-in things that you can put before launching this into production and also this environment can be chaotic right there you can turn up the two regions three regions uh, there are replication happening right there may be something that will be discovered like days months if a service goes down you really don't have to know when it is go down what is happening so it is very hard to predict hard to difficult so a lot of people it is impossible to know what is happening with thousands of thousands of server if one services goes down it may take us some considerable time to figure out what actually goes on so it is very difficult to go into track trace missing messages etc what happened there at that particular point of time can then we can predict okay different form different point of views we can look into and we are looking into a service it looks everything works everything healthy right but not everything is done as a perspective of the users right so that is one of the problem another problem we gradually get is that how we can measure this uh, common things that you like to measure to improve your service performance like how much resource or cpu or memory your services are using you can easily measure this and then you can try to fine tune those or improve on those by modifying your code so that by you can increase the throughput you can reduce the latency and other things you can look into for example how frequently you doing the deployment how long does it takes the code to go live right this boot start of time if one minute two minutes or few seconds right so how long it get to do a release right so is release need to be done on the mondays or release need to be done over the weekend so all those things can be further observed if you know what is happening why these services are taking so much to boot up or so much to giving latency why there is so much time that is basically spent to start up your services okay so that means how long your code gets to go live right then if you go live if there is anything happening right you need to know how we can recover from an outage how can you troubleshoot an issue okay how long it does it take right and how often you are getting a alert over your sms or etc okay so there is that unless until you observe or set up the tools to observe this it's very difficult to know that Okay, and nobody wanted to do this, much of this production support. What is open up? It opens up, if you start observing, it opens up opportunity to advanced capability, like chaos engineering, right? That means that you can, on your own, on your system, in a control environment, you can try to simulate the outages right and then see whether your system is able to sustain or not 
that is a part of the chaos engineering and then you can either reduce make these services uh start responding late or you can return 500 error or you can uh, don't want the services to get up right so that will help you to detect intentional failures that you can inject right into your services or you try to observe certain things that happen that require support if you're getting frequent search support requests right so which can uh anomaly detection you can do and you can also enable feature flags if a certain uh as we are using feature flag our case right if a certain feature if you wanted to release in the dark right without exposing into the content or without exposing to the other user that you can do you can route your some kind of a production uh, request to percentage say 20 percent you request uh, you put it to your next version of your application and see how the application is working there we also can if you have observability, so you can be more sure of that if the live production requests are sent to your application, if you take your application to the version, it will work. So you can, that is known as A-B testing, so you can do the A-B testing. Also, you can look into, answer the questions. If you'd like, it is better this version or this version is not that good enough, right? What happened if the user click the button and then if it is working or not, right? And auto tuning, uh, right? If you can, you know, check. Uh, basically, auto tuning is basically running your application. You change certain parameter at the runtime so that you observe that your application that you are running with those updated parameters are performing better or not. So, for example, it's like JVM, certain JVM flags are there, which enable certain GCs or garbage collector, which are more optimized. So that auto-tuning, you can, if you observe your services, then you can see whether those flags can be, or the environment variable can be enabled, so that it can choose to run the JVM in a different configuration, and can work uh much faster in terms of performance right so another thing is that adaptive uh application so you can uh, grow and sync your applications you can fail over or recover certain failures based on the environment those can be again automated So how we can do this observability, right? So basically, there are three cases we do this. One is logging, one is tracing, and one is metrics. OK. Logging, we are aware of, right, uh, is basically the log events we write. Uh, we know how to write logs, right, from our application. Uh, so we can grab those and try to investigate on the systems in the logs. And the logs are need to be connected outside external logs, centralized log storage, so that we can go in and check that, right? So we have a system like Elasticsearch, a QR. We should from where the logging log streams are being you know populated. Similarly, we have we can see the cloud stream or cloud version of certain logging systems. So, what are the logging helpers? Um, they are events. They let us know what is happened, right? And they are basically easy to read. If, if there is an error occur, we get the full track trace, right? So we get to know that which particular line or code 
piece this error generally happen okay and we choose that which level we're going to be logging so we log into that on the other cases in case of your matrix what it does it uh, give you measurement against the context what are the contexts This matrix are basically aggregate data, right? To identify basically the trend, for example, how the how many traffics are comes in, right? For last two minutes, or how many requests, how many users are actually signing up. Okay, in that flow, how many user has been signing up for last day or so so those matrix and those matrix data are continuously sent and those can be combined together to get a data aggregate view and it helps us to predict the train for example if you can see in the matrix there are more users are coming off late in the registration process so we can assume there are like more active users going to be onboarded into our system so i can position more hardware etc so that gives me certain help in understanding those <coughs> okay and then comes the distributed tracing what is happened is records of events that are ordering in a certain order is happening into throughout multiple services right so basically distributed tracing let you to understand which events the order of the events the exact way the context has migrated from one application service to another service. So two more of them, when you wanted to, you know, find figure it out what is the real latency, or you want to figure out what is the response look like. But <coughs> we need to know whether a certain response comes in uh, 200 millisecond whether this is as per the SLA or not okay and how many services records that are there how many of them are quickly served or not okay so service A is calling service B service B is calling service D B right so it's the all the services are okay if the DB was slow or the network is slow so basically <coughs> as you have a like a distributed trace between these different hubs so and within the particular thread of request processing where the particular thread is spent most of the time that information you also get whether it is slow in the service a to b whether it is slow between the service b to the db that you can figure it out which making the particular our application slow maybe it's a more database request the connection is remaining open another example of distribute test is the error so you have logged it so you figure it out
हेलो हेलो हाँ सुबह देख लेट मी स्टॉप द रिकॉर्डिंग मिनट हाँ